The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. Today we celebrate this memorial mass for Ariel Dominguez Casimiro passed away on September 14, the Feast of the Exaltation or Triumph of the Cross, and was just buried a couple days ago on October 7, the Memorial of Our Lady of the Rosary. My name is Father Angelo Casimiro, and I was Ariel's eldest son. On behalf of the Casimiro family, which includes my stepmother, Cora Casimiro, my younger brother, Ariel Casimiro Jr., and his wife, Leda, and their little daughter, Hayden. My younger sister, Cecilia Casimir Groves, and her husband, David, and their sons, Sean and Patrick, we thank you for your condolences, love, and support, and prayers as we mourn the loss of Ariel, a beloved husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, and friend. I currently live, I currently live at the Marion House of Studies in Steubenville, Ohio, and on the very day that my dad, Ariel, passed away, I tried calling him earlier in the day so that I could talk to him. But my stepmom Cora said that he was asleep and could not be woken up. He had just come back home at the day before, after having been in the hospital for two weeks, where his health had deteriorated. He was very weak because he was not able to digest food. Later in the day, my sister Cecilia called to ask me to come home right away, as she didn't think our dad would be around much longer. So I told her that I would see what I could do. And then she called me back and said that they were going to call 911 because they were very concerned about my dad. And so she came up and said that she would call back. I had gone to the chapel and my cell phone rang. It was my sister. She told me that her dad had just passed away. I was in total shock and I started sobbing. I thanked my sister for being a rock for me as I received the worst news that I could ever imagine. Our dad Ariel was gone, and I felt that the world had stopped. That day, September 14th, as I had mentioned, was the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross. As I received the terrible news about my dad's death, the crucifix was right above the tabernacle in the chapel. I couldn't help but think of my dad who had gone through his own passion in the last few years. Seeing the crucifix there was our Lord's way of telling me, I am with you, and I will be with you in your sorrow. And like Jesus tells his disciples in our gospel reading today, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. As we mourn the loss of a good, gentle, kind, and generous man in my dad, Ariel, may we take consolation in those words. For the Lord will never abandon us, for He is always with us. We just have to have faith in Him. For as Jesus tells us, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The next day, September 15, was the memorial of Our Lady of Sorrows. I offered up my Mass that day for the eternal repose of the soul of my dad. I knew that Mary, the mother of sorrows, would be with me and my family during this very difficult time, just like she was with us when we lost our mom, Susie, in 2009. In my bedroom, I have a small statue of Michelangelo's Vieta. 
as the Blessed Mother holds the dead body of her son Jesus, who but Mary can know and understand what it really feels like to lose someone who you love. She knows our sorrow and she is there to suffer with us. In the Hail Holy Queen prayer, we implore the Blessed Virgin Mary, to thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we set up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. We indeed live in a valley of tears because of the suffering that we experience in this world. Everyone has to suffer. There's no escaping it. Suffering is a part of life. We can either try to run away from it or embrace it. However, if we unite our suffering with Jesus' suffering and death on the cross, it can be offered up for a special attention, and thus it becomes redemptive suffering. Again, Jesus tells us, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? We know that everything in this world is passing. We enter this world and we will leave this world because our home is not here. We are only pilgrims on the way to our true home in heaven. Whereas Jesus said there are many dwelling places in his Father's house. However, in order to enter heaven, we must die. And no one wants to talk about death, because we're all afraid to die. It's a very uncomfortable subject, and I believe the fear of death is only heightened with the current pandemic. People say they want to live forever, but here on earth, here in this valley of tears. But who would want that if you can live forever in heaven? In the Catholic Church, we, we believe in the last four things, which are death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Death is the separation of a man's mortal body and immortal soul. It comes to all men and women as a result of original sin. It's a temporary state, for at the end of the world, all men and women shall rise again to be judged by Jesus Christ. And thus the whole man, body, and soul will be rewarded for the good or evil that he or she has done, body and soul, in this life. At the moment of death, each human person will then be judged by God based on his or her conduct in this life and goes immediately to his or her reward or punishment. Moreover, at the end of the world, Jesus Christ will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And at that time, God's whole plan for the world shall be revealed and his mercy and justice demonstrated. Heaven is the eternal state of perfect happiness resulting from a face-to-face -face vision of God, which is the reward for those who have served Him in this life. However, for those who are gone for heaven, but, but whose love for God is still tainted by some imperfection, he or she undergoes a temporary per period of purifying suffering, also known as purgatory. And when this purification is complete, they are fit to enter God's presence and are admitted to the joys of heaven. And that's why I believe it's so important to pray for the holy souls, because only God knows the state of a soul after he or she dies. We do not. So when someone dies, we should immediately pray for eternal repose of his or her soul and have masses set for them. Hell, on the other hand, is the eternal state of torment and despair, which awaits those who in this life have freely rejected God and the happiness which he offers. By his passion, death, and resurrection, Jesus Christ has conquered death. In our second reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, he proclaims, Death is swallowed up in victory. Where will death is your victory? Where will death is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of, the sin, is, of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Death is not the end, it is just the beginning. Death is where we are born into eternal life. Likewise, we know that there is a veil that temporarily separates us from our loved ones who have gone before us. We will not see them again until we ourselves pass up to the other side. That's why we are mourning 
for our dearly departed. That's why our, heart break, our hearts break and we ache for them. Because for us, death is still a mystery. It's still the unknown. And maybe that's why we're afraid of it. But that's where our faith comes into the picture. That's where we hear Jesus telling us not to let hearts be troubled and just to have faith. We take great consolation in the hope that we will indeed see our loved ones again. I will see my dad Ariel again and my mom Susie. May we be comforted by these words of Jesus in the Gospel. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I'm going, you know the way. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me.